Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman and George Evans and starring John Pertby, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray. <laughs> Let's face it, we are all good at something. As a matter of fact, my wife says I have hidden talents. <laughs> <laughs> Bragging again. You dirty old devil. <laughs> We've all heard from the canteen lady. Yeah. And the commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that you've been smuggling home your illustrated magazines of Swedish physical jerks. <laughs> Get in between your copies of the Sunday Telegraph and the Observer after the show. <laughs> you dirty old devil. <laughs> Sexy swine. Here, can we borrow them? <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, they're on sale or return. I mean, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. In any case, uh, a friend of mine's got them now. No, I haven't. I gave them to you back. <laughs> Remember during Come Dancing, when you were representing the South as the announcer's formation dancing team? <laughs> I liked their military two-step. Yeah, that's right. So especially the part where he put his left hand on his hip and gave a most curious salute with his right one. <laughs> Even with the white gloves, it was pretty obvious. It wasn't me. Now, shut up, the lot of you. Uh, well, as I was saying, we're all good at something and have talents, and Lord Quirk is convinced that this is especially true of the Navy. That's why, as the Sea Lord, he has called a special meeting to find out what they are and what ship they're in. Yeah. Please, everyone, I demand hush. I am the Sea Lord, and it is my meeting. Silence! I shall knock up my chin. <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> now, Wren Simpkins, I trust you are ready and about to take everything down for us. <laughs> really, Lord Quirk, there's a time and place for everything. <laughs> I don't mind when it's just the two of us, but in front of all these other, I do have my pencil and notebook at the ready. Uh, excuse me. What is it, Vice Admiral Prout? Oh, Lord, that's done it. Once Prouty gets going, settle back for a rave-up. I, I realise that you'll probably all think that I'm just a silly old fool. <laughs> I have no, no right to be at this meeting at all. But I happen to think you're wrong. <laughs> How dare you think of me as a silly old fool, eh? In future, I'll trouble you to keep your stupid opinions to yourself. And I'll have you know that I was much right to be here at this meeting as everybody else. Probably more. So let that be an end to it. <laughs> <laughs> It's his liver, you know. <laughs> you can always tell when he's had his fourth gin. The other 18 underneath him start barking. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm sitting here looking at my notes. And if nobody's going to ask me to read them, I may as well take my glasses off. Because I'm wearing them out looking through them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Weatherby's woken up. We'll be here all night. They shot at half past ten. Perhaps it would help if I were to advance. 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 It occurs it occurs to me that the reason for this meeting the meeting the meeting the meeting the reason why we're here is obvious the whole the whole the whole the whole the whole the whole solution the whole the no, to hell with it. Sort it out for yourself. <laughs> well, that was shorter than usual. Somebody must have abridged him. <laughs> no, then it's imperative that we get cracking immediately. And about time the new. I'm sitting here in my trues, trying to remain motionless so as to cut down on the wear and tear of the cloth. <laughs> Captain 
MacDoom. Try and look on the bright side. If I didn't stop myself wriggling about, the seat of my trues is going to glue brighter than a hundred watt bulb. <laughs> At least so I've heard. I've never actually seen one except in a shop. In our house, the minute Mr. Sun goes to bed, so do we. <laughs> but what, what I meant was be grateful for small mercies. You don't find me complaining. You all received your invitations to this meeting weeks ago. I only got mine this morning in a grubby envelope. I realize that you probably all think that I'm, I'm just a silly old fool. <laughs> and have no right to be at this meeting at all. But I happen to think you're wrong. How dare you think I'm a silly old fool, eh? In future, I'll trouble you to keep your stupid opinions to yourself. And I'll have you know that I've as much right to be here at this meeting as everybody else. Probably more so. So let that be an end to it. <laughs> oh, Lord. That VSOP brandy that he gets from Casablanca for a quid of gallons done him in. <laughs> Do you know you could use his liver as an underfelt for a carpet? <laughs> Wishing to be a bore, as I seem to be saying some days ago, it has come to my notice, and I want to get this meeting over as quickly as possible, that the Army and the RAF have initiated talent contests to increase recruiting and make service life more popular. So I am initiating our own talent contest to be held and judged before the others, and which will be based on the popular TV program conducted by that Mr. Hugo uh, Brown, or, or Pink, or, or, or Yellow, or something. I'm told by Ren Simpkins that it is called It's Your Opportunity Knockers. <laughs> I didn't quite catch the last word. Knockers. <laughs> Thank you, too, Admiral. Right, gentlemen, so regard this as a challenge. The gauntlet is down. It's up to the Royal Navy to prove that it has more entertainment talent than the other two services put together. So go out and find it. All right, next. Leading Seaman Goldstein. At last. I wondered when you English would let the Welsh have a bit of a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I insist on singing to you a beautiful ballad composed and written down on paper, which goes like this. <coughs> Baubles, bangles, see how they ting ting a lingle do. Yeah, well, thank you, Goldstein. Don't tingle lingle us, and we won't tingle lingle you. <laughs> what next? No, 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 I haven't finished yet. I've got an encore, man. Saucepan for... Yeah, you get your saucepan back some other time. I want it. Next. Oh, so kind. As the entertainment's chief, chief, I would like to render unto you a delightful aria from the Mikado by the excellent Messrs Gilbert and Sullivan, which I am sure you will agree unto me is, in the world of the DJs, a lovely bit. A lovely bit. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Padre. Uh, but what is this, uh, this lovely bit called? It is entitled, according to my song copy on page 15, the <clears throat> 15th page, Tit willow, tit willow, tit willow, tit willow, tit willow, tit willow. Oh, great, I think your needle's stuck. Next. Plop. Pardon? Over here, Chief. It's me, Captain Povey. I'm the next. Plop. Are you feeling all right, sir? I mean, I don't mind waiting if you want to clap or plop off. <laughs> no, 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 Chief. I'm in splendid voice. Now, listen. I am doing my well-known and much-requested animal impersonation. Oh, I see. Now, that was a hen laying an egg. Oh. <clears throat> now, as I enter the farmyard, carefully closing the gate behind me, click. I am greeted by a familiar sound. Woof, 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 woof. My word, it's Mr. Porker, our Alsatian pig. No, 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 no,
Rover, our Danish bacon dog. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> it's just, oh dear. I always get stage fright at auditions, but I'll be all right on the night. Anyway, you must admit that my impersonations were extremely lifelike, to say the least. I'd rather say nothing at all, sir, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. No, 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 listen. Cock, 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 cock. Pop, pop. <laughs> It must be twins. <laughs> oh, there you are, Chief. What's that funny noise? Uh, Captain Povey, sir. Oh, dear. I hope you get better soon, sir. Actually, it sounded to me as if you were suffering from <laughs> a severe case of <laughs> chicken plops. <laughs> Words. Oh, that settles it. Unless you find somebody better, I shall represent the flotilla at Lord Quirk's talent contest. Oh, dear, there must be someone around. I sit and cobble at slippers and shoon From the rise of sun to the set of moon Cobble and cobble as best I may. Stow me! What a beautiful opportunity, Knocker, his voice. And I Where's it coming from? It's someone singing in the bathroom. Then what is that song? Oh, I don't know, sir, but it's an awful lot of cobblers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I and Rover admit defeat. Whoever it is, he's our man. Come on, let's see who it is. I've never heard anyone sing like this on Trout Bridge. Neither have I. Oi, who's in there? Hello, 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 you chaps. Mm, good gracious. Good grief. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting, but I was as quick as I could, but my little loofah got jammed between the bath and the bulkhead. <laughs> well, never mind your little loofah, sir. <laughs> Who is in there with you singing? Nobody, nobody. A chap likes a bit of privacy when he's having a mustard bath. And incidentally, I, I think I put too much in to get rid of my cold because my little loofah's got jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> and from the waist down, I look as if somebody's dipped me in custard. Well, never mind about your jaundiced little loofah and custody lower appurtenances, Mr. Phillips. But was that you singing about cobblers in there? Of course, of course. I can't believe it. Go on, do it again. Oh, very well, if, if you insist. I sit and cobble at slippers and shoon From the rise of sun to the set of moon Stone me, does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I always sing in my bath, you know, usually to my rubber duck. <laughs> he seems to enjoy it. Look, Mr. Phillips, there is entertainment officer of HMS Troutbridge. I would like to invite you to represent Captain Povey's flotilla in Lord Quirk's Opportunity Knockers. We insist. And that's an order. Gosh, I'm proud. I, sh I should be a star overnight. When is the contest? In about ten days' time. Oh, good. I, I should have plenty of time to get rid of this beastly cold. I, I, I think I'll take my little loofah and my custody legs back to have another mustard bath. <laughs> good morning. Right, Chief, where is our big star? We should have started rehearsal half an hour ago. Well, I don't know, sir. I never arranged to borrow and up that flaming Joanna all the way from the Popple's Head public bar, through the dock, yard, up the gangplank and into the wardroom. I don't care. Well, I did my best. I persuaded my bishop to let me borrow the candelabra to stand on the top of the pianoforte to light his way. Light his way. <laughs> <laughs> so kind. Sorry I'm late, darlings. My throat spray got bunged up. A star can't trust anything these days. Stone me, it's Ivan Novello in a state of careless rapture. <laughs> Nevertheless, the entire ensemble is enchanting, and I take it that the dressing gown is a cut-down kimono. Yes, it is. I got it last time we were in Hong Kong. But how did you guess? Because you've taken 18 inches off the M, and the flames from the dragon's cake hole on your back and now disappearing up somewhere in moderate. <laughs> I was afraid of that. And well you might be, sir. But don't leave in that part of your anatomy alone. I trust you're in good absence. Uh, sorry, pardon? 
It's the chief means voice. Oh, never better. I'm as fit as a fiddle and tuned down to my last G string. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I, I, I've got rid of my code, and tedious though it may be to artists of my calibre to waste our considerable talents merely to appear in amateur concerts, for the sake of the Royal Navy, I'll go through with it and win. Bigot. Loud mouth. Stay out, fellow. Now I shall sit myself at the Joanna and give you three for all. One, two, a three. No, wait, that won't do. Uh, not one single lovable Leslie note do I exhale until you've lit the candles. Oh, well, really? <laughs> I'd rather have settled for old Thunderguts back, 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 plop impersonation. <laughs> Mr. Murray, sir, we can't change dead horses in midstream. <laughs> candles illuminated, Mr. Phillips. Start singing your first song, song number one. Number one! <laughs> Uh, just one Benjamini jiggly moment. <laughs> let, let us do this properly. After all, it is my rehearsal. When I come on the stage, just wearing my red carnation, in, <laughs> in the buttonhole of my mauve and lilac sequin jacket with white flannels, I shall say to my devoted audience of fans... After he's blown him a kiss. <laughs> Naturally. Once the tumultuous applause has died down, I shall say... <clears throat> Hello, fans. I can't thank you enough for coming along tonight to see us do our own thing. In our own scene. At this pad. First, I'd like to thank my orchestra leader, who's just taken time off from doing his own thing. The one and only James Riddle. And, of course, we are fortunate to have with me tonight... We are fortunate to have with me tonight our own pianist, Dig the complexion, we think he lives under a paving stone. <laughs> Alice Skiffel, Baby Powder Johnson. It's looking more like... <laughs> Plop every minute. <laughs> no, 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 with his voice he's bound to win. Music, maestro padre, please. Stay kind, by all means. I couple all day and I couple all night And I sing as I couple this doleful day Oh, very funny, Mr Phillips, sir. But let's have the right load of old cobblers, like that we had before. What do you mean? You wasn't cobbling like that when you was in the bath. Perhaps he misses his little rubber duck. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. I, I only sing in my bass voice when I've got a cold. Fortunately, after 45 must have been time for the contest. Oh, no! Judas! Trust Noddy to muck it up! No, 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 hang on, wait a minute. Let, 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 me, let me be sure we've got this right. You can only sing, I cobble all day and I cobble all night. If you've got a cold? Yes. <laughs> And you've had 45 mustard baths to get rid of that cold? Yes. Right, come with me. We're going nasty cold hunting. Gee, what, where are you taking him? To the deep freeze in the galley, sir. Just a minute, Chief. I didn't take you seriously. He's not really in the deep freeze, is he? Yeah, of course he is, sir. It's a very big deep freeze, so he's got plenty of air and plenty of room for go walk, is he? <laughs> Provided he hasn't set rigid. <laughs> but he's only been in there five minutes, so hardly enough time for one. Hey! Give us one time. Well, get him out at once. Oh, very well, sir. Oh, hello, you chaps. What a bit of luck you guessed I was in here. The door must have shut accidentally when the chief asked me to go in and check on how many boxes of fish fingers we got. <laughs> Incidentally, we are two packets short. Look, never mind your fish fingers, Mr. Phillips, sir. How are your lyrical larynxes? Oh, don't worry about them. I, I'm word perfect. Listen. I sit and cobble at slippers and shoon. Look, forget it, Mr. Phillips. Forget it! What you need, sir, after that unfortunate accidental experience, what you need, Mr. Phillips, sir, is a bit of hotting up. Now, this way, sir. Come on, follow me. Now, where are you taking Noddy? To the boiler room. <laughs> to ask him to check the steam temperature, sir. Oh, no! You'll shrink his little sailor suit. <laughs> Right, in you go. Into the wardrobe, Mr. Phillips, sir. 
but I wouldn't sit down until your uniform stopped steaming. <laughs> so we'll never get the creases out. I'm fed up. For the past week, you if you haven't frozen me, you've boiled me, and when you haven't boiled me, you've frozen me. Any luck, Chief? I doubt it, but let's have a hark. Right, cobble away, Mr Phillips. No. Oh, come on, sir. No. Now, go on, warble away with the epiglotticals. No. Mr Phillips. Well? Sing. And that's an order. Oh, all right. I sit and cobble at slippers and shoon. Stop, Mr. Phillips! And that's an order. Chief, what are we going to do with him? We're running out of time. I'm afraid it's going to have to be plan B, sir. Shh. He's not going to like that. Hey, hey, where am I going? Uh, treats, Mr. Phillips, sir. Treats. Where am I going? A nice, enjoyable trip. In a rowing boat. Oh, no, you don't. I'm, I'm not potty. I, I can see that coming. You'll take me out into deep water, push me over the side and try and give me a cold that way. Mr Phillips, I'm shocked at you, sir. How could you think that of me and come on and marry? We're going to treat you to go on one of those rowing boats on Nunky's boating pool at Southsea. Gosh, I've always wanted to go on one of those. <laughs> Although I'd rather go on one of those little paddle boats, you know, with the pictures of the little gnomes and the fairies on the side. <laughs> and you, you whiz the wheels round with your hands. <laughs> right, in you get, Mr Phillips, sir. In you get, into the yellow one, number five. I'll see you chaps later. Right. Thank you. Turning these paddle wheels doesn't half make your arms tired. Not that I know anything about it, Chief, but uh, did you manage to get hold of Uncle Lebanese on the phone about the yellow one, number five? Oh, aye, aye, sir. I say, you chaps, paddles are getting awfully stiff to turn. And, uh, hey, hey, my, my feet are getting wet. I, I, I think the yellow one, number five, has sprung a leak. <laughs> like a charm. <laughs> they never sail too well without a bung. The opportunity knockers prize is as good as ours. Uh, 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 us. The water's freezing. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I have to announce that, unfortunately, Lord uh, Lord Quirk is unable to be with us this evening to introduce the contestants for his Opportunity Knockers contest. But I am delighted to introduce Lady Quirk instead. Now, I realise that you all probably think that I am just a silly old fool. <laughs> who shouldn't be introducing Lady Quirk and that it should have been the Admiral and that I shouldn't have been here at all. Well, you could be right, but I happen to think you're wrong. <laughs> How dare you think of me as a silly old fool, eh? In future, I'll trouble you to keep your stupid opinions to yourselves and I'll have you know that I've as much right to introduce Lady Quirk and be on this stage as anybody else, probably more. So let that be an end to it. <laughs> oh, belt up proud and get back to your bottle. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Quirk. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to kick off our swinging do called Opportunity Knockers, from HMS Makepeace, we have their own, their very own, leading seaman Entwistle with his death-defying juggling act. Here he is, leading seaman Entwistle. <laughs> And I hope your balloons stay up longer next time. <laughs> oh, I for one don't. My friend, good bodies, deflating balloons. Are you ready, Mr. Phillips? You're next. Of course I am, loves. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm in perfect voice. I, I trust the Padre has lit his bishop's candelabra. Yes, sir, and with me about, he's chained them to the piano. Yes, and I, for one, don't blame him. And so finally we come to the contestant from HMS Troutbridge. Here to sing about his souling and healing from Chu Chin Chow is their own, their very own, Sub Lieutenant Phyllis. I see the and shoot from the rise of sun to the sand. 
monkey's boating pool has gone and frozen the wrong bit of it. <laughs> he'll never get his voice adjusted now. I knew it should have been me all along. We get him off once I rehearsed that. that. <laughs> and that was Robert, our Alsatian pig, laying an egg. No, 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 it wasn't. It was our Alsatian chicken. No, 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 it wasn't. No, I'll hold them again. <laughs> Murphy, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray have been digging for talent in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman and George Evans. John Pertry was the Chief Petty Officer, Leslie Phillips was a Sub-Lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the CO, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Ren Simpkins was Heather Chaston, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, and Vice Admiral Prout was Michael Bates. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.